Hi everyone, in this video I am going to start the concept of bridges. So what do you mean by bridge? What is the purpose of bridge? Bridge is consisting of four arms. Four arms that may be a pure resistance or it may be a reactance. That means it may be an impedance or it may be a resistance. What do you mean by impedance? It may be a combination of resistance and reactance. R plus JXL or R minus JXC. Okay. What is the purpose of bridge? Bridge is used to measure any unknown quantity, any unknown quantity like we can measure the resistance value or we can measure capacitance value, inductance value and even we can measure the frequency. So there are several bridges which are used to measure several parameters like resistance, capacitance, inductance and frequency. Okay. There are two types of bridges broadly classified based upon the input we are applying like a DC bridge and AC bridge. DC bridge and AC bridge, these two are classified based upon the input. In DC bridge, we are giving the input. In DC bridge, we are giving DC input. In AC bridge, we are giving the input, AC input, a sinusoidal signal with some frequency. Okay. In DC bridge, we can measure a component that is resistance. Pure resistance we can measure. Reactances we cannot measure here. Okay, so to measure this resistance, there are three types of bridges available, Wheatstone's bridge, Kelvin's bridge and Megavom bridge. These, the, the difference among these three bridges is, Wheatstone's bridge is used to measure the resistance value in terms of kilo ohms and Kelvin's bridge is used to measure the resistance even in ohms. That means even wiring capacity, wiring resistor can also be measured using this Wien bridge. That means in terms of ohms. And mega ohm bridge, the name clearly tells that it is the bridge used to measure the resistance value in terms of mega ohms. So depending upon the uh, capacity of the resistance measurement value, the bridges are being classified Wheatstone's bridge, Kelvin's bridge and mega ohm bridge. If you go in depth into this Kelvin bridge, there are two types of bridges again, Kelvin's normal Kelvin bridge and as well as Kelvin's double bridge. I will tell what do you what is the Kelvin bridge when this concept comes and sec, coming to the second uh, type of bridge circuit that is a NAC bridge. AC bridge is nothing but here we are giving the input as AC supply. Using such type of AC bridges we can measure inductance, capacitance and frequency. So inductance bridges are inductance we can measure using these bridges like Maxwell's bridge. Hayes bridge, Owen bridge and Anderson's bridge. Anderson bridge is also one of the important bridges. Anderson's bridge. So these four bridges are used to measure the value of unknown inductance. And capacitance, <coughs> sorry, capacitance measurement can be done by using a bridge called Shearing bridge. And Wien's bridge is used to measure the unknown frequency. Okay. Here the capacitance measurement, inductance measurement and resistance measurements are going to be done by comparing with the known values. The unknown resistance can be measured by comparing with the known resistance value. Inductance, unknown inductance can be measured by comparing with the known inductance value. And similarly, unknown capacitance can be measured by using known capacitance value. So these are the different types of bridges and their classification. Now let us start with the explanation of Wheatstone's bridge and how to calculate the unknown resistance in that Wheatstone's bridge. So this is the bridge of the Wheatstone's. Okay. So Wheatstone's bridge is this one. Here we are applying the DC input supply to a bridge consisting of all the resistor, all the arms are having pure resistors. So there is no reactive component. Okay. So first arm is A and D. So AD is the first arm which is having the resistor R1. And AB is the second arm which is having the resistor R2. And CD is the third arm which is having the resistor R3. And BC is the fourth arm which is having the resistor R4. So I1 is the current flowing through first arm. I2 is the current flowing through second arm. And I3 is the current flowing through third arm. And I4 is the current flowing through the fourth arm. Okay. See the blue color meter indicating here it is a D arsonal meter or a galvanometer. What is the purpose of galvanometer here? 
when the bridge is in balanced condition remember very 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 important point when the bridge is in balanced condition the current flowing through the galvanometer is equal to zero what do you mean by balancing condition i1 whatever the current flowing through this i1 is equal to i3 and similarly i2 is equal to i4 okay so i1 is equal to i3 and i2 is equal to i4 that means whatever the current that is flowing through this first arm entire current enters into the I, uh, third arm that means no current flowing through the galvanometer and similarly i2 entirely going to the i4 and no current flowing through the galvanometer that means there is no potential difference across this galvanometer so galvanometer simply acts like open circuit no current is flowing that condition is known as balanced condition okay remember we are going to measure the unknown values like resistor capacitance and inductance all the values we are going to measure only when bridge is in balanced condition okay now suppose if bridge is in imbalanced condition what happens bridge is not balanced some current flowing through the galvanometer we need to find out what is the amount of current okay now i will explain how to calculate this unknown resistance value which is rxr r4 is equal to r3 r2 by r1 r4 this is the unknown resistor r4 is nothing but unknown resistor always it is in universal representation that always it is better to construct connect an unknown resistor at our unknown component like resistance or capacitance or inductance in any type of bridge unknown component always it, it is at the fourth arm <coughs> so that there is no confusion when a person to person if the bridge is changing then it is very easy to understand to the other person also when we are using the fourth arm as the unknown component okay now i will explain how we have got this uh, equation so take this bridge wheatstone's bridge now assume the condition assume bridge is in balanced condition assume the bridge is in balanced condition what happens when bridge is in balanced condition i1 is equal to i3 and similarly i2 is equal to i4 the galvanometer current flowing through this galvanometer ig is equal to zero there is no current flowing through the galvanometer galvanometer current okay now see here i want to write the voltage equation voltage vdc is equal to vpc the voltage drop here and here the voltage drop at this point d is equal to the voltage drop at this point what do you mean by the current flowing through the galvanometer ig is equal to zero why ig becomes zero there is no potential difference between vd and vb vd and vb okay the potential difference is zero vd minus vb is equal to zero that means vd equal to vb what do you mean by vd from here to ground so that is vdc what do you mean by vb from here to pc hope you understand okay vd is equal to vb that means vdc equal to vbc how can we write the vdc how can you write vdc i3 into the voltage from here to here we can write i3 into r3 that is equal to what is vbc from here to here the potential drop is i4 into r4 how can you write the equation i3 i3 is nothing but the current flowing through r3 and as well as the same current is flowing through r1 because i1 is equal to i3 i1 equal to i3 so from here to at the bottom here what is the voltage that is v here to here what is the total current flowing through this one i1 or i3 okay how can you write this so i1 is equal to <coughs> from the circuit we can write i1 is equal to i3 equal to total voltage v by what is the total resistance in that path r1 plus r3 and similarly 
I2 is equal to I4 is equal to V by what is the total resistance R2 plus R4. So that's why substitute this I3 in this equation V into I R3 by R1 plus R3 that is equal to V into R4 by R2 plus R4. So V, V cancel together, multiply, cross multiply, then R2, R3 plus R3, R4 is equal to R1, R4 plus R1, R4 plus R3, R4. So R3, R4, R3, R4, R4 which is existing on both the sides. So R1, R4 is equal to R2, R3. What we need, where is the unknown resistance? We know unknown resistance is nothing but R4. This is the unknown resistance value. So R4 is equal to R2, R3 by R1. This is the formula of unknown resistance which is connected at the fourth arm. So in general, it is Rx. So you can write it also as Rx is equal to R4 is equal to R2, R3 by R1. Remember, this equation is considered, the equation should be considered or we can also say valid only when bridge is in balanced condition bridge is in balanced condition okay suppose when bridge is not in balanced condition then this equation is invalid <coughs> that means it may valid or may not valid but you should not consider directly this equation you have to do some analysis part which i will explain in the next video when this bridge is unbalanced condition what is the procedure that we need to follow we need to take some thevenin's equivalent circuit for the entire bridge circuit Okay, that I will explain in the next video. But when the bridge is in balanced condition, you can directly take R4 is equal to R2, R3 by R1 to measure the unknown resistance value. Okay, so this is the Wheatstone's bridge. In the next video, I will explain how to measure the current flowing through the galvanometer when the bridge is in unbalanced condition. Thank you.